whiteness in God's mercy, like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. For the love of God is broader than the measures of our mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more simple, we should take him at his word, and our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of our Lord. Troubled souls, why will you scatter like a crowd of frightened sheep? Foolish hearts, why will you wander from a love so true and deep? There is welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. Hello, and welcome to St. Ignatius of Antioch Parish and our celebration of the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. And my sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the only one. You alone are the Lord. Most I, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God 
creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbors injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever, not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich 
in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, so that he might be Lord of both dead and living. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Move with compassion. The master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Should a man nourish anger against his fellows and expect healing from the Lord? Should a man refuse mercy to his fellows and seek pardon for his own sins? These verses are taken from the first reading from the book of Sirach, or as it's sometimes called, the book of Ecclesiasticus. The message of these verses is brought to life by Jesus in the Gospel reading, of the parable of the unmerciful servant. I fear that at times I distance myself from this parable. After all, I wouldn't go around throttling someone. I wouldn't react like the unmerciful servant and refuse to forgive a small amount after I had been given, forgiven a tremendous amount. I wouldn't be like that. Or would I? Or would you? Something within us seems to 
feel that we have a right to continue in our anger towards someone who has hurt us badly. After all, we didn't create the situation. The other person did. We didn't attack the other person. The other person attacked us. We're the victims here, not the aggressors. Our lives would have been significantly different if the other person had not done or said this or that. And so we tend to justify our anger, our, our, our grudge. And to make matters worse, when we reflect on a past upset, we relive it in our minds and also in our bodies. We feel the emotions welling up in us. Even though the incident may have been a long, long time ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Before we realize it, we're there. We're at the scene of the attack. And we once more feel the rage that we obviously still have. I want to tell you a little personal story. A few years ago, I attended a priest workshop held at Vincent, St. Vincent de Paul Seminary, our seminary in Boynton Beach. I received a great blessing the first night I was there. I could not sleep all night. I kept replaying in my head incidents that had happened many years earlier between myself and a priest who at that time was my superior. I was a religious, religious brother at the time and I was preparing to go to theology to become a priest. Or at least I thought I was going. Well, the superior didn't like me and the feeling was mutual. Only he was in a position to make my life extremely difficult, and he did. Well, I moved on to another assignment instead of through theology, something that he probably had a hand in. In time, all fell into place. Five years later, on the eve of my ordination to the priesthood in Columbus, Ohio, there was a knock on my door. That superior had sought me out and wanted to apologize for his part in what had happened between us. I told him that I accepted his apology and it was all water under the bridge. It was big of him to find me to say that he was sorry. But the truth is I was so wrapped up in my ordination the next day that I really and truly didn't give the incident that much thought. Many, many years later, on that workshop, I was given the grace of being haunted by the memories of those, of that, those incidents, memories that I should have buried in the past. And I couldn't sleep that, ne that night, but I knew what I had to do. First thing in the morning, I went to Our Lady's Chapel in the seminary and told the Lord that I thoroughly forgave that other priest. Then I went to confession to seek forgiveness for letting this simmer in my life all these years. All of us have our own personal battle stories. Everyone has been wronged by someone, hurt by someone. But no one has the right to harbor a grudge. At least, not if we consider the staggering amount of mercy God has showered upon us. I have made mistakes in my life. Many were thoughtless acts, but I've always also chosen to make mistakes. I've sinned. Yet God has not given up on me. I consider the blessings of my life and I cannot fathom how, why God is so good for me other than to say that his love is beyond my conception. I'm a priest. I cannot expect to you express to you how wonderful the life of a priest is. People need me, and I can provide that which only another priest could provide. Mass, the Eucharist, penance, the sacrament of the sick. I'm called to be present in the happiest times, baptisms and marriages, and in the most difficult times, sickness and death. I can be a vehicle of that which the doctors cannot provide the peace of the Lord. God is good to his priests. And I know that God is good to you too. Those of you who have children, remember what it was like 
when you held your first child or each of your newborns. Husband and wife, you just looked at each other and looked at the baby with a joy that you couldn't put into words. I have to tell you, one brand new mom, brand spanking new mom, called me up from the hospital and she told me that she just had the best baby in the whole world. I told her, the baby is only six hours, lo hours old. Give him time. God is so good to us, to each of us and to all of us. And the Lord also has battle stories, but he continues to forgive. Why? He knows what human beings are like. He knows that we all make mistakes. Sometimes we mean well, but do wrong. Sometimes we choose wrong because we're too weak to withstand the pressures around us. We often offend against God's love, but the Lord does not hold a grudge. Years ago, here at St. Ignatius, we had a wise old house mother. She said, don't, don't call me a housekeeper, I'm your house mother. And she used to care for us priests. She was an African-American lady. Her name was Iola Brown. She was wonderful. Well, one time she reminded me that in the history of the world, there were only two perfect people to walk the face of the earth. And people rejected both of them. One was accused of being pregnant outside of marriage, and she could have been stoned to death. The other was crucified for upsetting the status quo. God knows that the rest of us are far from perfect, but he still loves us. All of us have received abundant mercy from God because he loves us. He loves us far more than holding a grudge. One of my favorite books, which I've mentioned to you from time to time, is Sheldon Van Alken's book, A Severe Mercy. This is, love, this is a love story about two people who found God in each other, Sheldon, or Van, and his wife, Davy. They tried to construct the perfect marriage, but God was never part of their lives. So they constructed what they called a shining barrier to protect their love. Nothing would get in the way of this love. They wouldn't even have a child because they didn't want the child to get in the way of their love for each other. You see, their love was completely self-centered. Well, God eventually penetrated their barrier. And they became believers and they learned a new love and they found him in each other. Now Davy, the wife, eventually became sick, and she passed away. But she died saying the words that it became her and Van's way of expressing God's love in their lives. She said, under his mercy. And that's how we all live. We live under the mercy of God. He's been good to all of us. When we consider what we have received, the call to be merciful to others is a tiny reflection of God's great gift to us. Living under his mercy, we must bring his mercy and compassion to others. Today's readings encourage us to recognize what we have received, to bask in the mercy of God, and to extend his mercy to others. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. God bless you now. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under, under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy and comp compassion, we offer our prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and protection of all our men and women serving in the military, at home and abroad, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women in our diocese discerning priesthood or religious life, may they be open to hearing God's call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this family of faith, may the Lord fill us with love and truth and guide us in the ways of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died from the coronavirus, may they and all our beloved dead know the loving embrace of our merciful Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pray for Anna Sarsky, Charles Menolito, and Paul Morset, who died recently. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have been, have been away from the church, may they come back home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and compassion, look beyond our sins and hear the prayers we offer you with contrite and repentant hearts. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ joins us together, let us rejoice in him, and in our love and care for all, now love God in return. Ubi caritas es vera, es vera. Deus ibias, Deus ibias. In true communion let us gather, may all divisions cease, and in their place be Christ the Lord, our risen Prince of Peace. Ubi caritas es vera, es vera, Deus ibias, Deus ibias. May we who gather at this table to share the bread of life Become a sacrament of love, your healing touch, O Christ. Ubi caritas es vera, es vera, Deus ibias, Deus ibias. My sisters and brothers, 
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that, w- that what each has offered in the honor, to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. (coughs) How precious is your mercy, O God, the children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless God's name. Bless the Lord and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
merciful, the Lord is kind and merciful. And let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And have a beautiful week, folks. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Now with the strength of your word, send us to be your disciples, to bring all the world to the joy of your kingdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Now make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope of Christ's coming, and by unity let your love fill 